Welcome to a new Zoom video. In today's Zoom video, we're going to be talking about the true history of Barbaros, or Barbaros, which is the new series which is going to be out and it's going to be featuring Engin Altan and all those characters from that we know and love. So this is going to be what the history about that series will be about. So the true history of Barbaros. Let us begin. So what does the term, where does the term Barbarossa come from? So the term Barbarossa comes from the Barbarossa brothers, Uruch, Hayreddin Ishak, and Ilyas. And these um, pirates, basically, they were admirals of the Ottoman Empire. They were born, they were from Albanian heritage, from Albania, and they traveled around Europe and they were basically sieging a lot of sh ships at the time. And they were very powerful, even before they started serving the Ottoman Empire. And this is where the, and the term Barbarossa comes from the fact that Uruj, who was the oldest brother of the four brothers, Uruj race, who's going to be played by Engen Altan actually, um, was nicknamed Baba Uruj because at the time when he was traveling around in Europe, there was the Spanish Reconquista happening, which happened obviously in 1492, as we know. And the Spanish Reconquista, what they did is they basically either killed all the Muslims and Jews or exiled them from their homeland or forced them con to convert to Christianity, basically. And Oruj Reis, more people are joining, Oruj Reis took a lot of these uh, Muslims and Jews on his ships and took them into either North, and Af North Africa or into Ottoman lands. And this was at the time of Sultan Bayezid II, who was obviously nicknamed Bayezid the Saint. And he uh, is nicknamed this because he allowed a lot of Muslims and Jews into his land. And this was obviously appreciated by a lot of other nations at the time. So Oruj Reis was nicknamed Baba Oruj. And the people who, the Spanish, actually heard this as Barbarossa. They heard Baba Oruj as Barbarossa, the Italian word for red beard. And um, Oruj Reis is known for having a red beard. And this is why he and his family have come to be known as the Barbarossa brothers or Barbarossa twins, or even though they weren't actually twins, so they just come to know, be known as that. Hayreddin is the one who the show is basically named after, because he's the most famous of the Barbarossas. Um, and Oro Trace is the oldest brother, and Ilyas and Ishaq are less known, but they were still important. And these brothers actually conquered Algiers for the Ottoman Empire in 1516. So that's just the overview of what the, where did the term Barbarossa come from and what does it actually mean. Next slide. Oops, sorry. Uh, next slide. So who was Uruj Reis? So Uruj Reis was the older brother of Hayreddin Barbarossa, and he was born in 1474, and he was, yeah, he was the oldest, as Faroe said, and the play, the actor who's going to play him, obviously, is Engen Altan, who just played Ertruan, and we're going to talk a bit about the series as well, because this is what a lot of you are here for, is for to know about what the series is about, going to be about. So Uruj Reis was the oldest brother of the Barbarossas, and he um, was born in Albania, in Ottoman lands, at the time of Sultan Bayezid II. And this is when the Ottoman Empire really started to become like a superpower. Even though Sultan Bayezid II didn't do much in terms of conquest, they had just conquered... Um, oh, sorry, it wasn't under Sultan Bayezid II, it was under Mehmet II, my apologies. But that's when they just became started to become a superpower because they conquered Constantinople and etc. in 1453 and wherever. But Oruj Reis, he began traveling at a very young age and he took his brother along with him. And he was traveling around maybe when he was, some sources say when he was like 12, 13, but most sources are like 18 when he started traveling properly, when he started actually going on ships and stuff like that. And um, he was so important for the Ottoman Empire at a later stage when uh, Selim the first became the Sultan. I'll talk about that in a moment. As you can see on the screen, I put a bit of information about him. So he, when he and his brothers took some of the Spanish people into the lands of North Africa, one of uh, Sultan Bayezid's nephews was um, in, the, in the land, basically, in Northern Africa. And Sultan Selim, when he became Sultan, he overthrew his father, Bayezid, and he wanted to become the sole Sultan. So he had to do fratricide, which was kill his other competitors to the throne. So he was going to kill, he killed the Oral Trace's close companion, which was Sultan Bayezid's nephew. 
And this way made Uru Therese and his family basically fear for their lives because they were so close to this guy that he, they were scared that Sultan Selim was going to kill them, kill them. But when they started to conquer lands from the Spanish, so they conquered Algiers, and Algiers are basically a puppet state for the Spanish, although it's technically under Islamic rule, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And the Ottomans, when they took Algiers, they took, it was so crucial because this was like their first, overseas expansion where it wasn't just straight on land because normally they would be conquering Egypt and stuff like that which was more likely than not on land when they would just be able to think but now they became a serious naval power as well um, under Udo Therese and yeah his brother Haider Din was important as well in this time but because he was the oldest he commanded more respect than his brother did because he was the oldest obviously although they were both um, when they conquered Algiers, the Ottoman Empire offered them a lot of gold, a lot of and military support and backings. And because they were the caliph as well, at the time they just became the caliph, that, that, was, that was a big thing. So, of course, Oro Therese and his family were going to accept this um, backing from the Ottoman Empire. And that's why Algiers became annexed by the Ottomans and became territory of the Ottoman Empire. Only for a few years, because unfortunately, in 1518... Um, Oro Therese was killed by the Spanish after an attack when the Spanish retook Algeria. However, um, his memory will live on with his brother, Haider Din. Moving on, when you talk about Oro Therese, I keep mentioning his name, he's gonna, um, he was more important than Haider Din at the time because he was old, as I said, and his power in the Ottoman like empire at the time, it could have grown so much bigger if he was not killed, like his brother Hayruddin, who we'll talk about in a moment, because he he grew so powerful that it was unbelievable the amount of power he he had had. Yeah, so most likely, um, uh, unfortunately, he will probably be killed. He'll probably be killed in the series um, later on because the Spanish retook Algeria, and this is really unfortunate because they had to go onto one island and uh, which like separates Algeria and Spain and all that area, and they had to stay there. And when the Ottomans couldn't take that territory. The uh, Spanish basically retook Algeria, and Algeria never remained under one empire for more than ten years until Ottoman basically cemented their rule there. Um, and Oru Therese is famous today because he took all these Muslims and Jews into Ottoman lands in northern Africa after the Spanish Reconquista. So he's very so that shows his nobility and it shows how generous he was that he was able to do that. That's just Oru Therese's history, um, who I've I think. He's going to be more like a lot of people are going to start watching Barbarossa or uh, Barbaros because Engin Altan is going to be in the show and he's going to play the older brother. And that's going to be like a big thing. And I think that's a, another crucial reason to why he uh, to why people will start watching Barbarossa. So unfortunately, if you've just joined now, you won't you won't be able to hear. But I'll leave this slide up just for a few seconds so you can read um, what I've written. Uh, yeah, so I'll just quickly leave this here. So you can see everything. All right, I'm going to move the slide on now. And this was now, who was Hayreddin Barbarossa? So Hayreddin Barbarossa is what, is what the series is basically made and uh, named up again. Can everyone mute themselves, please? Sorry. I think that was just, if you just joined, you might have accidentally left your mic on. Just can you please make sure your mic's off? So Hayreddin Barbarossa, Barbarossa was such a famous... Ottoman admiral and so many modern scholars, uh, there's just too many to count, have claimed that he is the best pirate ever to exist. And this is not just from Ottoman perspectives. A lot of British scholars, actually, a lot of British historians can claim that Hayreddin Barbarossa was an amazing pirate and was the, probably the best pirate ever to exist. And he was so powerful that the fear that the European nations had for the Ottomans, especially their naval force, was unreal. So Higher than Barbarossa, who was the younger brother of Oruch, he outlived his brother. And as you can see here, you can probably read what it says here. He outlived his brother by a few years. And yeah, I, Engin could have been Higher Din, but then again, because Engin's a bit older, he can play him an older character. But he will probably die in the series, um, Engin Aldan. But he outlived his brother, and during the reign of both Yavu Sultan Selim and Suleiman the Magnificent. So Yavu Sultan Selim only lived um, as Sultan for, I think it was, Eight years he ruled as sultan. I, I made a video about Yavul Sultan Salim, and he only ruled as sultan for eight years. And in those eight years, though, he did more 
um, more, more people are joining. He did more as Sultan than a lot of other Sultans. And when Suleiman the Magnificent came in, he ruled for 46 years. So that's a lot, a long, longer time. And Suleiman the Magnificent let Hayrettin Barbarossa. Can everyone make sure that they're muted, please? <laughs> let Hayrettin Barbarossa rise through the ranks. And he was so capable, Hayrettin, that he managed to cement the Ottoman power in the Mediterranean and was so diligent and so powerful that he made the European nations fear him, as I said. So if you can see here, I put a bit about his life as well. Um, he was he was so talented, in fact, that European nations, in terms of, um, not the EU, uh, Spain and those countries and stuff like that, um, they offered him to conquer for, for them. So they were offering him more money, offering more this and that, to conquer um, Ottoman and against the Ottomans for him. I think that's so fascinating that he was this Islamic leader, this Islamic uh, pirate, was the most powerful pirate ever to exist, so much so that even European nations were afraid and tried to uh, bribe him to, to work for them. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? I think that's quite amazing. And he fought in legendary battle, battles, countless. I couldn't even include so many, but there were so many battles that, I had to, that was there when I was researching him that he fought against the Portuguese, the Genoa, Genoa Venice, Spain, uh, Malta, all these lands and powerful nations. France, I think he encountered with slightly, but he actually helped France, not in a negative way, because Suleiman the Magnificent um, had an alliance with France where they worked together. So the Ottomans received some support from uh, France to conquer um was it Hungary? Yeah, Hungary. They received some help to conquer Hungary. And Barbarossa, in exchange on the command of Sultan Suleiman, who gave him the task, he was helping the French conquer Nice in France. So that, I think that's quite interesting because it shows like a, that the Ottomans at this time were so revered that the biggest enemies became their allies. Because obviously they were trying to conquer Europe and stuff like that. That was the whole aim of the Ottomans. When they couldn't do that, they that they were so feared that the Europeans had to form an alliance with them in order to not be destroyed themselves. I think that's quite amazing, the fact that this alliance happened. So Hyrodin flourished and he actually conquered Tunis. And when he conquered Tunisia, this um, area of Tunisia, Algeria, even Morocco, Morocco wasn't under Ottoman control ever. It was never under Ottoman control. But the area of Algeria and Tunisia, it was known as the Barbary Coast. Now, the Barbary Coast was named after Barbarossa, as you can probably tell. And it was also because, actually, I've got another slide about this, but I'll talk about this now quickly. Um, it's where the pirates fed on European um, boats and they used to do constant raids into European um, countries, such as Spain, Malta, Italy, stuff like that, where they would constantly try and raid and they would take a bit of land and conquer it there, but then they would lose it. And Hyder the Barbarossa was a key part of this. And um, he was made chief admiral, actually, when under Suleiman the Magnificent, he saw his potential and saw his power, and he became so crucial for the Ottoman Empire that he rose and rose and became governor. He became, um, he was like Suleiman's right-hand man for a, a small for a small time, but because he was constantly traveling, he couldn't stay in Istanbul for too long, which was obviously the capital where Suleiman would stay normally. Unfortunately, uh, in 14, uh, sorry, not 14, 1546, he would die, but he um, retired from his duties a year before. So he retired from his duties in 14, uh, 1545, and he is known for reshaping and cementing the Ottoman threshold of not only just Northern Africa, but the Mediterranean. And unfortunately, un uh, after his death, the Ottomans slowly, slowly started falling out of power in the Mediterranean because they obviously lost the Battle of Lepanto which kind of derailed, which kind of helped make them derail and lose power in the Mediterranean, which is not great, but we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on what um, Barbaros will be as a series and higher than Barbarossa. I think he'll sort of play second fiddle to Oroch race because Oroch was the oldest, as I said before, and Oroch will be played by Engin. But because he will be later on in the series, you'll see that the potential and power he had, but he won't be just thrown off to the side immediately. He'll be very... Uh, it will show his potential and show his power as well throughout the series. And his uh, popularity was just 
loved by the Ottoman people because he obviously bought a lot of gold. Now, I'll talk about this in a moment, but the true motives of the pirates wasn't great. And I'll talk about it in a moment. So I'll just stop here and carry on in a moment about um, the motives of the pirates. But I'll, uh, this is the Hayreddin Barbarossa's character. Um, next slide. So the state at this time was the Ottoman Empire, as we said. And as I was saying a bit earlier, they became so powerful because the time that Barbaros will be set, well, we're assuming, because from what I've looked at, it will be around 1515, a year before the conquest of Algiers. And 1517, as we know, if you watch my last video about Sultan Selim, um, make sure to check it out. The Ottomans, Salam alaikum salam. The Ottomans became so powerful. The Sultan at the time was Sultan Selim the first. Yeah, and as I said, and they became such a superpower because they'd taken Constantinople in 50, uh, 1453 and were known as an empire there and dominated the Balkans in the 15th century. And in the 16th century, they began east and southward expansion and they conquered basically almost all of the Middle East. Again, they couldn't obviously conquer Persia because Persia was ruled by the Safavids at this time. But um, when Barbarossa brothers began conquering the Ottoman names, it completely changed the way of Ottoman conquest because, like as you can you can read it here, um, the Ottomans mainly were conquering just on land. Like as in, when you see the uh, map, I don't have the map on here, but I'll yeah, I'll explain this. It's just it's very it's just the Middle East, Egypt, and then Turkey, and then the, the Balkans. So it's only continuous. So it can't there's no offland, unlike the British Empire, which would happen much later than this British Empire, 18th century and 17th century, much later, where they had land here and there and whatever, the Ottomans would have just con continuous land. But when the Barbarossa twins came and started conquering land in Africa, like uh, the Algiers and stuff like that, which was not directly a part of the Ottoman like land, it completely changed the way of Ottoman conquest because now they were a naval power they were so powerful that they were feared and the pirates were feared and it was just a, a complete um change of conquest for the Ottoman Empire and when Suleiman the Magnificent came in and he made um higher than Barbarossa and more powerful more powerful it was just a match made in heaven for the Ottomans because now Suleiman the Magnificent was conquering into Europe he conquered uh, and obviously islands as well roads and he nearly conquered Malta he pushed into um, Vienna, he couldn't conquer Vienna, but he pushed into Bulgaria, um, not Bulgaria, sorry, Hungary, and all that land. And then they were conquering into a bit more the Safavid land. They were conquering uh, Tunisia, Libya, which is Triple Latania, and um, and they were just conquering so much land that it was just amazing that the Ottomans could grow so quickly. And that was what um, that's basically the state at the time and the what it was at the time of the state. Now, when I talk about Ottoman pirates, I have to talk about the reality. And I don't like to sugarcoat things. It's better if you hear it from me than from anyone else. That the Ottoman pirates, their true motives when conquering and stuff like that, their true motives were to take slaves. And this is the complete reality. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to say, oh, well, this happened. No, slavery, it's, it's, inexcusable and it's unforgivable and the true motives of them it's actually uh, estimated but these estimates aren't completely accurate because it's they can't there was no records of the slaves and stuff like that but the estimates are that they took almost 1 million slaves or i think it's 1.25 million slaves between 1530 and 1880 all those these not these are not completely accurate can you can see the way of how much slaves they were taking this sheer volume of slaves taken by the Ottoman pirates was absurd. And there's not only this, they would take gold and stuff like that, and they would just terrorize the European uh, empires and stuff like that. It's inexcusable, and I don't want to sugarcoat, but yeah, this is the time the Ottomans were in their peak. And the term Barbary, so as I was saying earlier, the land of Tripolitania, which is Libya, um, uh, Tunisia, and Algeria, it was called Barbary, Barbary Coast, where the pirates would feed on European uh, ships and stuff like that. It was called Barbary because of the term Beber, uh, Berber, which is the ethnicity of the Northern Africans. Um, 
And that's why it's called Barbarian. It's also called Barbarian because of the Barbarossa twins, uh, Barbarossa brothers, sorry. And that's another reason why they're called Bar uh, Barbary Coast. But that's quite interesting that the pirate, although it was called, uh, it was named almost after the Barbarossa uh, brothers, which I find quite amazing. So these slaves were taken by the Ottoman pirates and the conditions of these slaves were terrible. Some of them would be taken to Istanbul, to the palace, or to the, they'd be uh, sold off to slave markets and stuff like that. And they would mainly take uh, the European, like the Spanish people and the, um, what's it called, Italians and stuff like that. That's where they would, that's who they would take the slaves from. And it's a very touchy subject because it, but I don't want to sugarcoat, it's the truth, it's terrible, it's disgusting that they took the slaves. And, but what's interesting is the fact that a lot of, a few of these slaves would rise to ridiculous powers. There's one slave who was taken by Barbarossa, in fact, who was 17 years old when he was taken as a slave. And as time went on, he eventually converted to Islam. I can't remember his first name, but his second name was Race. Race. Um, but he would become such an amazing, uh, yeah, such an amazing commander that he became the Grand Admiral after Hayreddin Barbarossa's death. And this shows that the slavery was, they could rise to positions that other slaves couldn't. But unlike, but un, there's no denying the fact that these slaves are treated harshly. And in fact, there's, I'm just finishing talking about slavery and I'll talk more about the Ottoman Empire itself. It's, it's sad. It's because we don't want, we obviously like to think of the, I don't want to let you guys think that the Ottomans were perfect or any empires were perfect, any Islamic empires were perfect, because the reality is the Ottomans took slaves. The reality is the Ottomans did a lot of, lot of uh, bad things, terrible things like slavery. And it's better not sugarcoat than completely neglect any of the bad things that an empire has done when they have done these bad things, which the Ottomans had done here. So I've talked about the slaves, and I think that was the most crucial point when talking about the Ottoman pirates and stuff like that. Now, when talking about the slave, uh, the pirates itself, I've got so many interesting stories basically to tell. So I know a lot of you might have seen Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow was basically created off an Ottoman pirate named Yusuf Race, who was an Englishman who converted to Islam and became a pirate in Tunisia. And he was ridiculously rich. I think at his death he had uh, between a million coins at the time of his death, which was at that time absurd. Like it was ridiculous that amount of money. No one would have that amount of wealth, especially as a pirate. And he was, and uh, this is a common theme that a lot of the, I'll answer questions in a minute. Um, a lot of the pirates, of the time, if they were not taken slaves or they were not born into piracy, a lot of them would come from um, lands such as the Netherlands or England or Ireland. And there's actually a few called I from Ireland as well, from uh, France, there was a few, and even from uh, Italy, you know, it's these these people, if they weren't born into piracy or they weren't taken as a slave or they weren't uh, rose through the ranks, some of them would come from other European nations, which show the power of the Ottomans because they they didn't want to compete with them because these pirates were ridiculously powerful. They basically ruled the entire uh, Mediterranean. You know what I mean? It's like it's ridiculous when you think about the power. And what's another thing that's interesting is the Ottoman government kind of left them alone. You know what I mean? It's like they were the governors of that land and we'll leave that land to them. They can control that land. The Ottomans would focus on Constantinople or the or Istanbul or, and the land in, uh, with them in, uh, in terms of the Balkans and stuff like that. And they would leave, Assalamu alaikum KD, it's nice to have you here. Um, and they would, someone else is running now. It would, they would leave that land to them. Now, another thing that I wanna to touch on uh, before I do the next slide is that the Ottoman pirates, it's an interesting, story of how they fell because it, in, i'm not going to talk about in this um zoom because i don't i don't think we have enough time but the ottoman pirates they would have rivalries with the americans as well and that's when eventually they fell but i'm not going to talk about it here i'll make a separate video about it a last thing i want to say is the ottoman pirates didn't just conquer lands around them they went into iceland 
the Ottomans conquered Iceland between, I think it was 627, if my memory serves it right today, 627 they conquered Iceland. They even raided into Ireland, which is right next to England. They raided into Ireland, they raided into the Netherlands, they raided, and they took a lot of this land. They took Ireland, I think, a part, a part of Ireland for a few months. They took Iceland for a whole, I think it was five, six months, they, or maybe a few months, they took the entire of Iceland, the land. And a lot of the, unfortunately, took, were the people were uh, sold into slavery. But the fact that the Ottomans were able to get into the land, which is completely separate from them, is quite fascinating, if you ask me. Like, I think that's quite interesting. I'm just going to move the slide now. But yeah, so yeah, as I was saying, the Ottoman Empire is a very fascinating story. And the fact that a lot of the pirates, when you think of modern day pirates, of like Jack Sparrow, they were based on the Ottoman pirates of the Middle East and of the Barbary coast, which was Tripolitania, which is Libya, um, Tunisia and Algeria, and Morocco, which was not under Ottoman control, but still it was similar to Ottoman control. So now that I've basically explained what I've needed to explain, if you guys have any questions and we can have a good session of question time to now. So Feroz asks, what do you think would be, uh, what do you think? Would the Ottomans be more powerful if Hyreddin lived more? So th this is a question that people have posed. It's not just about if Hyreddin would live more. Or a lot of people say, oh, what, would, what do you think would last would if um, Sultan Mehmed II lived more or Sultan Suleiman lived more, stuff like that. I don't like thinking of it as if they lived more because that's not what was written. History, the truth was written in what has ha what's happened. Hyreddin, I think, in my personal opinion, after researching him, had come to the peak of his power when he was with the Ottomans. He'd come to the peak of his power and he couldn't do much more than what he's done. If you know what I mean, because he died, as I said, when he was 66, 67 years old. He becomes so old at the time, there was no real... If you know what I mean, there, I think he'd come to the purpose of his life. He couldn't have done much more. The purpose, he'd done so many conquests that he couldn't do any more, in my opinion. That's my personal opinion in terms of his character, his person, um, in terms of the amount of conquests he did and that how high he was risen to from Suleiman and stuff like that. In terms of would the Ottomans had won the Battle of Lepanto, which was obviously the when um, many empires like the Spanish and stuff like that um, worked together. It was okay. We only got ten minutes left, so I want to take some more questions. But I don't think the Ottomans would have won it because the the amount of communication that the European nations did to the Holy League, it's called the Holy League, did to defeat the Ottomans in that battle. I don't think any commander. I don't think it was the fault of. Um, the commander at the time, I think it was Reis, I can't remember his first name, I'm really sorry guys, my memory's not doing great, but I don't think they would have won it. And I, another thing is, so, Suleiman Magnificent, he, after his death, the Ottomans, I don't like to say that they were in a state of decline, or in a state of even stagnation, because they keep rising and rising, but the Sultan who replaced him, or the terrible Sultan, Selim II, if you ask me, was one of the worst Sultans the Ottomans have ever had. It was nicknamed Selim the Drunkard, the Sultanate of Women happened under his reign. And it was just, yeah. If you ask me, I think he was another major problem for the Ottomans. Because Suleiman the Magnificent, although he was a brilliant Sultan, he didn't pick the right successor because he had, could have chosen Mustafa, but he listened to um, other people's views and conspiratorial views of Mustafa and had him killed. And he had his other son killed as well. So I don't think that was the best decision. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions at all? Um, Froze, do you have any questions? I think I think you guys asked a question earlier, so I'll just scroll up to the chat. So, like, Oroj will be killed, yeah, you'll be killed in the show, 100%. And if you ask me, I don't think Engen should be Hyreddin, because Hyreddin is the younger brother, and he won't be as important um, in the beginning. 
what would happen if the Barbaros was against the Ottoman Empire? Another great question, actually. Yeah, it would be, that's, the, that's actually, I never thought of that. But to think about on the spot, I think that it would have been terrible. It would have been an abomination if the Ottoman citizens, who were the Barbaros brothers, went against the Ottoman Empire because reality is, they, when they were conquering Algiers, when they were conquering these lands, they didn't conquer it in the name of the Ottomans. Once they had conquered it, then they received military support and stuff like that from the Ottomans. So it's not like they were, when they were conquering anyways, it wasn't like they were doing it for the Ottomans. They weren't against the Ottomans, but they weren't doing it for the Ottomans. And it's that in my mind that is showing that their motives when, conquer, when conquering wasn't just for the Ottoman Empire. But if they were against the Ottomans, it would have been uh, shambolic because the Ottomans wouldn't be able to defeat, wouldn't be able to compete with a naval force, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Does anyone have anything else to say? Also, uh, do you want to say something? Oh, me? Yeah, salam alaikum. Oh, yeah. Um, I asked my husband, um, uh, what would you think uh, would happen if Barbaros was against the Ottomans? But he says, he couldn't do too much because of um, uh, the Ottomans were too powerful for him. And I think, yeah, I mean, the Ottomans were extremely powerful, but their, their navy wasn't as powerful as the Barbarossa brothers made them. So I think the Ottomans would be, wouldn't have taken Tunisia and Algeria and stuff like that if the Barbarossa twins were against, the Barbarossa brothers were against them. I don't think they would have been completely destroyed, of course. They would have kept all their lands that they had, but they wouldn't have been expanded. And the Barbarossa brothers, what they did for the Ottomans in terms of helping them and stuff like that, it wasn't... If if they didn't exist, if they, if they were against the Ottomans, actually, sorry, which is the question, they would have done worse for the Ottomans because they wouldn't have taught the navy to rise as powerful as it was because the navy was so powerful because the Barbarossas taught how to agree. Treat, uh, treat them and stuff like that. So when, if they were against them, the Ottomans wouldn't have a strong enough navy, wouldn't have dominated the uh, Mediterranean, wouldn't have taken Tunisia, Algeria, um, Tripolitania, and stuff like that. That's my opinion. But yeah, everyone's entitled to that. Yeah, I, I agree because, um, how should I say? He was a very powerful man. Yeah, I agree. And he had uh, obviously very great talent. So yeah, I totally agree. And you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Don't know why I think Uruch is underrated. Yeah, I agree. Uruch is very underrated. I think Barbarossa, because he lives so uh, higher than sorry, higher than Barbarossa, because he lives so long, um, he is not overrated. We're not overrated, but he is given so much more credit than his brother Uruch because Uruch died at a younger age. But if Uruch lived when the Ottomans were in its peak, when they were conquering Tripolitania, when they were conquering Tunisia, you know what I mean? If 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 Uruch lived at that time, the Ottomans could have just been completely dominant and could have even taken, you never know, like, that's that's like what I like about theories and stuff like that, and what I don't like about it as well, because, yeah, we can assume, oh, this would have happened, this would have happened, this would have happened, but we never know the truth, because there's no proof of it, this will happen, because I know, I think, in my opinion, Orf is underrated, but then again, if he was alive at the time, would they have done too much more? I'm not so sure. That's, that's the thing. Uh, keep up, brother. Inshallah, one day there'll be more than 100 people joining us. Inshallah, inshallah. I think the most that we've ha had when I did my last Zoom was 22 in the Kuril Shusman Zoom. This one, the maximum we've had is 12, but it's okay. Um, I think that's okay. I, I don't really do it for the numbers. I just do it for whoever wants to learn. And if people are unavailable, then it's okay. But I think the best time is just to do it and hope that people join because I'm not doing it for the numbers or for so many people to join or whatever or to have more subs or whatever I just do it so I can spread knowledge and this is uh I think a hot topic at the moment Barbarossa because not many people know about the, his history and my like in my opinion like this one will be more in more depth than I think other videos because I've talked for what is it 40 minutes nearly about this one character so that's why I just think in my opinion but I think I'll take two more questions or one more question because I've only got three minutes left and then I'll have to end it. So anyone, anyone have one more question? Um, my friend, uh, my husband said you should read about um, Murat Reis or his Dutch name is 
Jan Jansson. Uh, he's yes, very interesting. Yes, yes. Do you know him? Yes, 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 yes. This was another, I think this was what I was trying to talk about before. I couldn't remember his name. Murad Rish, he was a Dutch convert. And, he yes. came, and this is similar to what I was saying about Yusuf Rish, how a lot of the people came from the Netherlands or England, or stuff like that, to serve mm. for the Ottoman Empire because of uh, its power in the Mediterranean. Murad yeah, did you know that they don't mention him in history class because I live in the Netherlands too? Yeah, and um, I never heard of him, but my husband he read about it, so they uh, otherwise I would never have heard of him. <laughs> they, That's interesting. Yes, uh, thanks for that. Um, info. I, uh, thank you because I for, completely forgot his name. I can't lie, I, I couldn't remember his name. But I was saying how they a few was for, come from the Netherlands and stuff, and he's one of them. Um, I think uh, um, people consider like Yusuf Reish and Murad Reish because they came from other lands like England and. Netherlands, they consider them almost as traitors. I think that's another reason why you won't learn about him in the Netherlands, if you ask me, because they they don't like glorifying his history when he's went and serves Ottomans. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, true. It's, true. it's true. Do you have anything else that you want to input? Um, no, not at the moment, but I I do I will write it down because you obviously obviously know a lot of things, so. If something comes to mind, I will definitely uh, uh, write or ask you, but just not now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Faroz asked, what was the uh, father of Barbaros twins? I think it was Jakub Aga. I think that was his name, Jakub. Um, I think he was from Greece, but yeah, I think that was his name. I can't remember exactly, but I think his name was Aga. Um, yeah. I think I'll take one last question. We've only got one minute, so actually, I don't think that we have time for another question. Anyone want to quickly input something, shout out their channel, whatever, because uh, we only have one minute left. But okay, I think that's it then, guys. Thank you so much for joining, everyone who's joined uh, and staying till the end of the Zoom. It was, I think this was one of the most interesting Zooms in terms of the research I had to do for the characters and for the people that I was researching and the pirates especially. And I didn't want to show the coat, so I said the truth and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, subscribe to my channel, Forgotten History. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, because this will also go out on YouTube. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. Uh, and I shall see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.